I did a video recently where I was diagnosing some stuff in my unit and as I was panning around, there was a mercury relay there. And uh, I pointed it out and just said that it was a long story. Well, I'm about to go into that now. <laughs> uh, but not, not, not the story so much as what mercury relays are and why they're interesting, why they have some major advantages over contactors. So anyways, uh, I worked for a very large residential company at one time and, uh, I mean, we serviced thousands of units a year. I, I can't even estimate the number. It's just, it's mind boggling. And within that super large sample size, there was always a handful of units that would just eat up contactors, okay? And we obviously did all of the textbook HVAC things, you know, looked at inrush, added hard starts, blah, 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 and nothing really worked. And, you know, if you want to say that the compressors were going bad on these units, I really, I wouldn't argue with you. Maybe they were. But I do know that as long as we could keep the contactor working, the systems would last for years. It's not like the compressor would short out within six months. No, these are systems that we could keep alive for years as long as the contactor would stay working. And so I, I became very interested in trying to solve this problem. I did lots and lots of research. Uh, and then what really pushed me over the edge is my own unit having this issue. See that? <laughs> Two months old. Mm, not good. So why does this happen? I, I don't think I want to go into that. It's just going to make the video too long. But I do know that I took this out and well, my first one failed after uh, six months. I put this in and during that two month period, I was looking into options. And then finally, when I got my mercury relay, I put that in. That's been in for years. Just fine. No compressor failures. Um, it's been just working great. So, here's the mercury relay. These have to be mounted in the upright position. And I'll go into why here in a minute. But uh, here's the model. I, I contacted uh, either the manufacturer or Wolf Automation. I'm not sure which one, but I talked to an engineer and we, we came up with this as an option and got it added to Wolf Automation's website. So here is what's inside. No, I'm not going to cut this open. <laughs> they're expensive and they're built like a freaking tank. Uh, I'm not even sure where I would start. <laughs> Here's what they look like inside. And I'm not going to go into all the details there, but basically you have a coil and here are your control voltage terminals. In this case, 24 volts. And uh, as far as what this pulls, this coil, it, it's about the same as a contactor. Uh, if I remember rightly, uh, 240 milliamps. I just know that it, the hold-in current is exactly the same as a contactor, so you don't have to worry about it smoking the transformer. But anyway, you have a little plunger here that comes down into this pool of mercury and that lifts the pool up to make the connection. So pretty cool devices. Now one big advantage of this design is I don't see any way mechanically that this can stick in the closed position. And that is great. That is great, great insurance to have on a unit because when you have this situation and this guy sticks closed, you might as well kiss your compressor goodbye on top of having an enormous electric bill if, uh, unless you catch it, you know what I mean? Here's the model selection guide if you're interested in any other models. So you can pause that if you want to look at that. Now, what's really important is on inductive loads, you got to have that H in the model number. The reason for that is because that relay is filled with hydrogen, see? And you might think, why, why would they fill it with hydrogen?
And well, it's, it's got to have something to do with the large inrush current and kind of arcs you get from inductive loads. So these are rated for inductive loads and uh, like incandescent lighting that has inrush, right? So you might wonder, well, you know, why hydrogen isn't hydrogen explosive? Well, yes, under the right circumstances. And I've actually seen this in person and it was <laughs> incredible. <laughs> That's a long story, uh, really, but just briefly, uh, you know, if you take a balloon and fill it with hydrogen and touch a candle to it, the explosion you get off that is phenomenal. And that's, it's an extreme exothermic reaction of the hydrogen combining with the oxygen in your, in your waste product is H2O, which is, which is pretty interesting. But under, under these conditions, no, the, the hydrogen in here is uh, perfect. That's the way they designed it. That's what they want. Here's where these can be ordered and they are pricey, but to me, they are worth every penny. Now, this is a single pole, and they do make double poles, and they're twice as much because it's basically just two of these together. I I decided not to go that route, and and I'm not going to explain all the ins and outs of this, but in a lot of cases. A, even a unit that's got a two-pole contactor can be controlled on a single pole device. And I'm not going to go into that, but if you're an HVAC tech, you you know enough to figure that out. Here is the specs. And if you look, see, the 60NO without the H is not for inductive loads. But the 60NO with the H is... Four. So here's your here's what your compressor would be, just general purpose inductive, 60 amp rating, and the shading means that it's UL listed. Well, I have found these so helpful, and again, I don't recommend anybody modifies a unit from OEM, but I just want to put that out. I, I just want to put this information out here because I was not aware of these and. I've seen them in some commercial units since since my residential days, but to be honest, they're just not that common, and it's it's surprising. I think they're great little devices, and I think more people should know about them. So I, I hope you all found that helpful.